with only his wife and the iguanas for company. And it was during this isolated research that he realized where the strange striped species came from. South Plaza is so small that the land iguanas couldn't venture very far inland. They were obliged to live right beside their marine cousins. And this is where the complications began. It seems that over the years, a few male marine iguanas became confused by the proximity of their land-based neighbors. So confused that they began fighting the male land iguanas for mating rights. The marine victors mated with the land-based females and outhatched not land or marine iguanas, but a hybrid cross between the two. This alien, non-fertile creature is that very rare mixture, the interbreeding of two separate species. In fact, it's thought that the hybrid may look rather like the ancestral iguana that first made its way across the Pacific all those millions of years ago. In the nine million year history of the Galapagos, only a few hundred plant and animal species transported themselves here. But in the four centuries of human occupation, we've introduced over 500 aliens, a calamity to those who made their own way. But now a condition that can make an animal an outsider, even amongst its own kind. The natural world is bursting with color and all these magical shades are produced by a pigment that's found in skin, hair, feathers, scales, and even eyes, melanin. But every now and then, when there's a genetic defect in the cells that make the melanin, the creature is abnormally light-colored and this is what's known as albinism. The single barnacle goose in this flock, suffering from the defect, is easy to spot. And there are albino megalanic penguins. Albino wallabies. and even an albino couscous, a type of Australian marsupial. This baby ring-tailed lemur in the forests of Madagascar is entirely white except for his tail and eyes. His mother's coat is normal, but she must carry the gene for albinism because only if both parents have it will they produce an albino. Lemurs live in tight-knit family groups, and even though this youngster looks noticeably different, he'll be taken care of by his relatives. Herd animals rely on safety in numbers and don't actively protect each other. This red deer is not red at all and will be easily singled out by predators. This wildebeest is a partial albino. That means it has only a little pigment and is much lighter than the rest of the herd. The same applies to these zebra, and they're all vulnerable to attack. Albinism has generated a series of observations that, if Charles Darwin could have witnessed them, would have provided wonderful confirmation of his evolutionary theories and it's all got to do with England's peppered moth. The moth comes in a common light form. And in a much rarer dark form, 